Hey everyone, I'm um, going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to kind of try to answer your, your uh, uh, questions, your comments. Uh, as you can see here, I get, I get quite a few different comments on different things. So I'm going to try and answer as many of these as I can. Uh, I can't guarantee if you send something in that I'll be able to answer it or have time to, but this way, instead of just answering a comment in a uh, one section there, I, I can make a video tutorial and everyone can see it. Uh, so it, I'm just going to bounce around between different programs and answer different things. So here we are in Lightwave, which it's been forever since um, I've done anything in Lightwave. But I now have Lightwave 10 over here at work, so uh, I might be doing some more Lightwave stuff. So uh, anyway, we have a building here in Lightwave, and let's move the camera and see how nice this building looks. Well, that's weird. Why does it l turn it into a box when I move the camera or the object? This is, this is a common uh, concern for beginner Lightwave users. Uh, the answer is pretty simple, though. If you hit D on your keyboard, you bring up your display preferences, and then you have this thing down here called bounding box threshold. Basically, anything that has more faces than this threshold is going to be turned into a bounding box. And this is a relic from the old days back when memory was really expensive. Um, big complex scenes, you know, you just couldn't navigate through them, so uh, the bounding box thresh threshold is probably pretty uh, pretty low, so just crank this baby up. If you want to make sure that you have um, never run into this problem or whatever, just crank it up to the max, and now when you move the camera and stuff, you'll see that everything is nice and smooth. Okay. Uh, now this was not a, uh, a question asked of me per se in any of the comments so far, but um, I'm not sure if I asked answered this before. Uh, another thing that beginners uh, need to be aware of is um, if you bring up your, uh, sometimes your grid, um, your viewport grid can get kind of messed up, especially if you bring in a very large model or a very small model. Sometimes your grid can get changed to a size where you can almost barely move the camera. Um, you can, again, you can set the grid type and the size in here. Uh, the other thing you can do is if you hit your bracket keys on your keyboard, you can see that you can change the size of the grid. And as you do that, it's very, uh, it has a big impact on your scene because as you change the grid size, you can see that the camera changes with it. So if you change your grid size to like this really big size, you'll see that the camera actually, now when you move the camera from the camera view here, you can see that the camera moves much, much faster because it's covering a larger area at a time. Now if I crank down the grid size, the camera's moving at a much more discrete kind of uh, pace here. And so the bracket keys and the um, uh, display preferences can help you out there. Sometimes you can get it so that you can't really move the camera at all if the, if the grid is, is too far down or too small or too large. Okay, or the, or the, cam or the opposite, the camera's moving so fast that you can't really see what's going on. So that's uh, my tips for Lightwave. Uh, now in Blender, uh, somebody was asking um, I believe what they meant was uh, if you're on a laptop or something, uh, so for example, in, in, in Blender, uh, the number pad keys are very important. So the one key is your front view, five goes in and out of orthogonal uh, mode, uh, three is your side view, seven is your top view, zero is your camera view, uh, period key zooms in on an object. Uh, but what if you don't have a number pad because you're on a laptop or something? Uh, so let's go and help you out with that. So if you go to File, User Preferences, Input, check mark, Emulate Number Pad, and now the um, keyboard, uh, the numbers keys on your standard keyboard, uh, the top row of your keyboard will, will not work. Uh, the one key will move in and out of your front view and stuff like that. Uh, the default was that your number uh, keys on your keyboard changed your layers down here, so now they won't do that anymore. The other thing is emulate three-button mouse is useful if you're on like a laptop with a, just a pad, or if you have like a like a Mac mouse that's just got like one button or two buttons. Uh, that will allow you to to um, hold down some different you know control keys and stuff, and then you'll be able to use the um, three buttons that way. Uh, the final thing I wanted to get into was uh, somebody was asking about shape animation. So let's just create a really quick shape animation for this monkey here. Let's go to the uh, object data section and under shape keys I'll just hit the plus and that creates like a basis shape key and then uh, now I'll hit plus again and now we have a, a new shape key that we can edit. So let's go into 
tab into editing mode and select some vertices here and kind of move them around. Okay, making kind of like a surprise expression here. Okay, so that's all there was to creating that shape key. You just you know hit create the new key and edit the uh, object in object mode, and then you can go ahead and start animating. Uh, go ahead and hover over the. Um, you can set the auto keyframe thing to on. Uh, the way I usually create my first key is just hover over this value field, hit I. Uh, now we have a, a keyframe. You can see it's all ready to be animated, or it has been animated. And then we'll just go ahead and start manipulating these values here. Again, I have the auto key on, so I don't have to keep hitting I over the, each time. And so now I have an extremely basic shape key animation. And as you can see, that the animation is actually occurring. But if I go in to my dope sheet here under the action editor, unfortunately, it does not uh, show anymore. You know, if you create a new action, for example, and then you go back and start editing um, the shape keys and stuff. Let's go back to our property panel and create some more shape keys, or some more keyframes. Now if we go back to our action editor, you'll see that unfortunately it doesn't show up anymore. It used to show up in the action editor. There was a, a section here for, for shape keys, but uh, you can't really, uh, let me know if someone out there knows how to do it. Uh, but all is not lost because if you go under the um, action editor, if you select dope sheet, you can see that the keyframes for everything show up in the dope sheet. And if you see, um, if you have an action created, for example, like an armature action, uh, and you want to synchronize your shape keys with what's happening with your armature uh, animation, you can go ahead and select it in here, and um, you can see that uh, the the animation or the editing is taking place. So um, basically, uh, that's that's it. You can just go ahead and use the dope sheet. Um, I, I don't know if that that kind of limits you in any kind of functionality in any way, but. Uh, that's that's what it, um, the way I would do it. So, okay. So I hope that these tips helped you out.